I started this project with one notepad that I picked up from the Dollar Tree for roughly one dollar and created these three journals utilizing different stitches in each. One is a pamphlet stitch, one a Coptic stitch, and one is a string journal. So I hope you'll stick with me for the next half hour or so to allow me to share how I decorated and created these journals. My name is Peggy. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I like to create journals, which I write in, and I am exploring some encaustic wax, and there's just lots of different little projects going on over at my channel. It, everything from altered composition notebooks to ATCs to note cards, etc. So join me by hitting that subscribe button and the notification notification bell lets you know when I upload additional content. So let's get started with number one. This notepad has 150 pages in it. I divided that into three stacks of 50 and I folded each page in half and that is going to create my signatures. This is about a three inch by four inch folded piece and it stacks about a little over a quarter half inch tall. So I have the three inches twice plus the in width and the height. I think I need to cut a piece about seven and a half inches and I want to cut it a little over four inches to create my cover. So I'm utilizing just one simple piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock to cut my cover. So that cover was cut, the length was decided by adding the width times the width or the width plus the width plus the height of the spine. And I think I got this a little long. So I think I overestimated the height of the spine. So I'm going to trim it down a little bit, but first I want to score that center. Probably should have trimmed it down first, but this is how I did it, so we're going to go with that. So I'm choosing the center and then scoring about a quarter of an inch on each side of the center to create my spine. And that ensures that I get that right in the middle. So had I trimmed the width down prior to scoring, I could have trimmed off this excess in one cut, but now I'm going to need two cuts on that width to get that cover to lay a little closer to my signature. So I'm going to cut off about an eighth of an inch on each end. I'm going to just stick that in the cut tool, remove that eighth inch on this side, flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. I'm just taking you on the journey with me. Had I done it correctly, this would have been different, but this is, this is how I did it. So just, I'm asking you to join me. So now I have the cover, the correct size. Get them all lined up. And I think that will work, work great in there. So I'm going to set my signature aside and pull out my crocodile and trim that a quarter of an inch on the outside edges. So now I have rounded off those corners. I want to create a hole to add my string or my attachment or my closure. So I'm just gauging the center 
and using my larger crocodile to punch that hole. And now to lay some color down on the outside. I'm starting with this yellow and a little pink, which is going to create a nice light orange. I'm going to mix that up with my brayer. And as those colors mix, you can see that light orange developing. And I'm pretty happy with that color. So I'm just going to lie my piece down on the plate and I'm using my small gel plate and getting some color on the outside. And where I have white peeking through, I'm just going to hit it with a brayer or pick up that extra paint that is left on the press. So I'm going to let that dry. And that will be my first coat. Now I'm trying to decide if I want to go with that dark orange or add in just some plain pink. I think I shall pick out a stencil. This is a stencil that I have not used. It was one sent to me by PM Artist Studio. It's one of their Yupo stencils. I have a couple here. So I a little more paint on the press. Place this stencil down and pick up through, through the stencil and pick up the paint through that stencil. And I like, I like that definition. And I went to pick up the ghost print on the other side. So I put some wax paper over the top to avoid getting paint on my hands. Folded a little bit of the paint off at the top, which made that first stencil a little softer and now I'll come back with some brilliant blue. I've just pulled a random stencil and I'm creating that design on the press by rubbing my brayer over the stencil and I'm just randomly putting that blue by pressing the page against the stencil, but not putting it completely down. So I'm just choosing little areas of the paper that I want to pick up that blue. And now some white. And I have this net from, from a pack of onions. I'm just going to create that little pattern with that net and get some light, lightness on this. And now for that solid dark orange. I'll come with this stencil once again and pick up some of that dark for the inside and a little on the outside as well. Just a little dab here and there. And some pink with bubble wrap. I'm just going to work with this until I'm happy with the way it looks. So I'm adding some pink to the inside. And I'm just using 
cat pole to clean my plate. And I'm grabbing some additional white. Piece of cardboard. I'll lighten up that inside. And now I think that the only thing that's going to benefit this at this point is some mark making, and I've chosen a Payne's Gray to make my marks. I'm using a leftover masking tape spool first. Add a little more paint spray to that plate and a smaller round cap to create some additional circles. And I think we're getting there. We'll do the same on the inside. Just adding some marks. I want to pull out my hotel key card to put some lines on there as well. But first, I think I'll add a little gold. I think it needs just a little bit of sparkle. So I added a stencil to add some of that sparkle. And you can see it, but it's subtle. See? Try to get it close so you can see where that gold picks up. And I'm just going to dab it throughout the design. And now that I have that down, I'm going to use my gold pen to splatter little gold drops across the entire piece. And I want to outline the outside edge with that gold pen as well. I'll go down the spine. Splatter on the inside as well. So just repeating the same process on the inside as I did on the outside. I think I'm happy with that. I get some of my splatter out of the way. I'm going to go over the top of this with some Mod Podge gloss. This is, I think, the first time I've used the gloss. So I'm, I'm content with how this created that little shine with the gloss and my signatures fit in there nicely. And I have that hole. I think I shall finish that off with a grommet. So let me set that grommet. I'm just pulling out my crocodile to do that. And with the crocodile, it you just pull that completely forward and it creates that platform where you can set 
set your grommets. So we have that in place. I'm just going to give it one more, one more squish. And now to get my signatures ready. And I created a template to punch my three holes out of cardstock. So all of my signatures are punched in the same position. I'm just putting that cardstock template in place as I punch the holes through with my craft pick. And as I said before, this is going to be a pamphlet stitch. So we just need the three, the three holes. And I have all of this punched now. I have 10 signatures of five. which gives me 50 sheets of paper. I'm marking where I'm going to punch the holes. And I've decided to make it five signatures of 10. So I'm going to combine some of my signatures and create five total. So I only have to sew in five of these signatures. 10 seemed a little too, too much. So I'm going to punch those holes in the spine where I want to sew those signatures. And I marked with my template on both edges of the spine and then drew a straight line across. That way I can just punch the five holes, one on top and of another across and now I have chosen some light pink embroidery thread that I shall use to sew this signature. I have measured that out three times the height of my book and I will string that thread and go from the inside of the signature in the center hole to the outside of the cover. And I will come back in through the top hole. And now I'm going to move down and go from the inside to the outside through the bottom hole. And we'll come back in through the center hole and tie this thread off in a little knot by placing one thread on either side of that thread running down the center of the spine. I just want to tie it off in a little square knot. I'm just checking to make sure I've gone through the right holes. That is my cat jumping at the screen door on the front of my house. He grabs the handle. He wants in. He's impatient going to have to wait just a moment. And there, I have one signature in, and I shall do the same four times, but I'm going to rotate my thread from light pink to dark pink, so I have two colors of pink thread on my signature. Once I get those sewn in, I will put some sari silk through my grommet hole. And that will create the closure for this book. 
I'm just pulling it through and creating that loop, pulling it tight, gently, and wrapping it around the outside edge. And I shall just tie that off in a very loose knot. Trim that so that we have the right length. length. And that completes the first notebook that we created out of that one single inexpensive notepad from the Dollar Tree. I really like the shine that that um, Mod Podge semi-gloss put on this outside cover. So I'm happy with that. So let me show you a photo of this book and then we'll move on to book number two. So this is book number two and this is a glued book. So I have created a Coptic stitch and then glued the spine. I'm going to start by tearing off some pieces of fabric that I want to use with this book. Once again, I have the same signatures that I used previously, 50 folded in half. I want to create a couple of focal points for, for the cover. And then I'll choose the one that I like the best to put on the front. So I have just cut this, the cardstock down to be about a quarter of an inch smaller than my front cover. I'm starting with some powder blue and pulling that PM Artist Studio Vupo stencil to create the background. And I think that light color creates a nice subtle background. And it picked up a little bit of the gold residue from the previous project and I'm okay with that. So we have a little powder blue, a little gold. Come back in with some brilliant blue. Another stencil from my PM Artist Studio stencil file. And I just want to pick up some of that blue by just tapping it to the press. We'll pull this off on a sheet of copy paper, not to waste the paint. We'll put that aside and probably use it for something later. So there's the start, the paint's gray. Pull out my little tin of household items that create my marking tools. I have a lid here, it's a small lid. Put some circular shapes on here with that paint's gray. I think this is a lid off of one of my Distress Ink sprays. My hotel key card, and I will just line up where I put that brilliant blue. There we go. My hand slipped and I made a mess. So let me grab a baby wipe. And let's just wipe that off and clean it up. To get it fast enough, we can get all the residue off there. So add a little more paint gray to the plate, redo those little circles, and let's try that again. See if my hand can be a little steadier the second time. I have the stays on black ink. I went to 
frame this card with that black ink around the outside edge. Then I'm giving particular attention to the corners to make sure they have a, a little more black than anywhere else. And now I'm creating my template to sew my signature. And for the Coptic stitch, I will create five holes, two on each end and one in the center. I am going to link a video on how to do the Coptic stitch. I'm not going to go through that here because it can get kind of lengthy. So the video will be an info card here as well as in the description. And I will stitch this up with some yellow thread. And I'm going to fast forward through this. So we will get it started with the yellow by going through each of these holes in the first signature. And then we will stitch those all together. Once we have them all set, I'll finish that off with the final Coptic stitch on that last hole and pull that thread to the center and tie it up. Coptic stitching is very easy. It's really just the process of looping that signature to the one right underneath it or before it. I hope you'll take a look at the video I did on how I do the Coptic stitch. And my original thought was to make this a coverless journal and just put that focal point on there. But I've decided that I would rather create a cover. So I'm just measuring once again to see what size I need to cut my piece of cardstock to create that cover. And I'm cutting it the um, width plus width plus height of spine. And that makes it long enough to create that cover. And then I am. Um, creating the spine exactly like I did in the first book with the scoreboard, finding the center and scoring a quarter of an inch away from the center on each side and rounding the corners off with my crocodile. And there is the completed cover. And now to decorate it. So let's pull that gel press out once again. I have a little dead space here. I think I'm choosing my color. And I'm pulling in that Payne's Gray. Adjusting my camera. Sorry for my hands in your face there. We'll get a coat of that paint spray with the PM Artist Studio stencil. And lay that down. And that creates a nice background. I have a little blob there where my Paint must have been puddled on my gel press, and I didn't get it brayered out evenly. So we'll add some gold to hide that puddle. Then I come back with the PM Artist Studio Stencil, another one, in just a little different definition with the gold. And I think that goes over and kind of disguises my 
puddle of paint a little bit. So let's go around the outside edge with some black stays on ink. Find the spine. And I think I'm happy with that. We'll put this on top. And I'm framing the little focal point that I created with these old picture corners. Remember the old picture albums where we used to put our pictures in the albums with these little placeholders, these little picture holders? I'm going to put one of those on each of the four corners. And they have an adhesive on the back, but I am going to glue them into place on this piece and then glue them down onto my cover. So I'm just putting a little dab of glue underneath them to keep them in place on the corner of my focal point here. That just keeps them from shifting and I glue them down. And I'm using a glitter glue to glue this into place. And there we go. And I am going to glue the signature into the book and I will use the front sheet of the signature as my in sheet. I will glue that down and I will use the back sheet as my in sheet on the back. So I'm not worrying too much about how that looks on the inside. I'm going to splatter some gold across the front, outline the outside edge with the gold, and then I will outline the little focal piece with some of that gold pen as well. I love these deco art gold pens. Every time I'm at a craft store, I pick one up. I'm going to place some glue in the center of that spine and glue the signature in and I'll clamp that down and set it aside and let that glue set up so it will hold it into place. And once that is in place and the glue has dried, I'll come back and glue that front in sheet to the front cover and the back, uh, back sheet of the signature I'll use as the in sheet for the back as well. So that completes book number two. Let's get started with book number three, which is going to be a quick and easy one. We're going to cover this one with fabric. So I'm going to start by cutting the actual cover of that um, notepad to utilize as my front and back cover on this. So I'm just cutting it in half. And 
And now I want to create the spine and I've pulled out some chipboard and I am just measuring a spine about um, a half inch. And then we'll take that the half inch width and then the four inch height because that's the what the signature has become on these by folding the paper in half. So now I have my front cover, my back cover, and my spine defined. Just going to trim that up one last time to get a little excess off. And I'm going to pull out some surgical tape, which is what I have been using to put my spine down. because it is thin, yet very, very sturdy. And I'll just place that over the top and make sure that I have it covered on both sides. And we'll do the same for the other side of that spine and then we'll have the front cover the back cover attached with the spine and it will create the cover for a book now I'm trying to decide what fabric I'm going to use those aren't going to be large enough and I want to measure out my string as well, determine if my string is going to look good. So I've chosen this piece of gray cotton fabric and I have cut that and glued it into place on the cover. And now I'm just cutting the front and back end sheet out of some cardstock and I've chosen a second piece of fabric to use on the inside spine. So now I want to cover those in sheets. I've rolled out some Payne's Gray. I'm going to grab this stencil. and get that color down on my two end sheets. Back again with the brilliant blue, I kind of stuck with the same, same colors throughout the three books. The two latter are gray and blue and the first one has some orange and blue. And the second is predominantly blues and the Payne's gray. I was just pulling that piece of fabric that I chose for the spine. It really picks up that brilliant blue color. Let's go around the outside edge of this with a little bit of the Stays on Black ink. And we'll glue that down in place. And now we have our 
front end sheet and our back end sheet into place. And let's glue this fabric down and the spine and trim that off so that it fits securely. Trying to pick a piece that has the most of that brilliant blue. See how that matches? There we go. Let's get some blue in there. And I think this one turned out to be my favorite of all three. I like the fabric on the cover. And now to attach those signatures, I'm just going to tie them in with some kitchen string. I'm measuring it to make sure I have enough to tie that knot. And I'm going to go from the outside and tie my knot on the inside. I started to tie it on the outside, but I'm going to switch that around and tie that on the inside so you don't see the knot. If I wanted to hang some things from my spine, it probably would have tied the knot on the outside and left some string to dangle some charms, but I didn't want to get these too uh, encumbered. So I will get all of these signatures in. And I'm doing the same here five signatures of 10 sheets. I divided the book of 150 pages into three booklets of 50 sheets. And there, all of my covers are in. I'm going to go back and trim off those inside threads to knot that down, to get that closer down to the knot. And now I'll grab a contrasting piece of fabric, not in color, but in pattern, and use that to tie the book shut. We'll trim that up a bit. And that easy, we have book number three. So we have created these three booklets out of one Dollar Tree notepad of 150 sheets. And I think it created some pretty interesting little notepads of 50 sheets of paper. I hope you enjoyed as well. Thank you for joining me. And I invite you to subscribe to my channel and follow along with me as I continue through this mixed media journey. Appreciate it. Bye for now.